Recently, I've become concerned about the direction of where the market's headed. During the great financial crisis that we saw from 07, 09, it took the Fed two years to jump in with quantitative easing. This time, it took the Fed two weeks to jump in with massive amounts of money to backstop the markets, backstop the treasury market from selling off and backstop the failure of many businesses. And the short-term stimulus that we saw from March till recently helped prop up the economy, prop up the system, keep people from, well, losing everything. And now, well, now we're at it again. Those trillions of dollars that came into the system have been spent for the most part. People are now running out of money. Once the PPP loans get forgiven, well, if your business isn't growing, do you keep employees on? Weekly jobless claim numbers continue to trend around 800,000 a week. That's not progress. Even though the stock market has gone up, it's only a very small sec group of sectors that have done really well. I mean, if you go look at the Russell 2000, they've struggled. That's your small cap index. What I see coming is that your large behemoth companies who aren't growing have the ability to issue debt and raise capital to keep them afloat. It's the small cap guys that are gonna get crushed. As we reallocate and rebalance our portfolios and decide, are we gonna keep that company? Are we gonna add that company? One thing we're looking at is market capitalization versus their debt load. And what I mean by that is, I look at the market capitalization of the company, so number of shares times the stock price versus how much debt they're carrying. And when I see those numbers get even or you know, one to one or worst case scenario, you see the market capitalization is lower than the actual amount of debt they're carrying. Well, this is an indication that to me that this company could become insolvent in the coming months. Insolvency is a big concern of mine. See, in my opinion, we went through a liquidity crisis. We entered the hope phase and now we're in the insolvency phase. Large cap companies have the ability to raise capital through bond offerings. They don't necessarily go to a bank or a, somebody who issues credit. They go to, out to the market, the bond market, and they issue debt or bonds. They raise capital and they can build cap, capital reserves. Or like in the past, we've seen them raise capital, go out and buy their own stock and get a massive return. Unfortunately, small companies don't have that ability in a lot of cases, especially privately owned companies like mom and pop places that you see around your town. When credit gets tight or their banks or credit unions tighten up their credit lines, well, they don't have the ability to go out and issue debt to the world and raise capital like large cap companies. So let's say you're a credit card company or a bank and you are in the midst of a pandemic and all of a sudden the people that you have lent money to start to well miss payments or get a couple of days behind or 30 days or 90 days or 60 days behind what do you do the answer is you increase your pay minimum payments so you can start grabbing back some of that money you lent out or you start to shrink the credit line of those sh small companies or individuals, and you start tightening up overall. You do this because, well, you know something's coming. And recently what we have seen is banks are doing just that. They're tightening up credit lines. They're increasing minimum payments on credit cards. Well, and also one of the biggest drivers of this market and the excitement over the last eight months has been the real estate market. What people don't realize is the number of applications versus the number of approvals is vastly different and has widened over the last 90 days. It's one of those things that we're not talking a lot about and that's those lenders of credit. We all have some level of credit. Maybe it's a mortgage, maybe it's a, you know, a car loan, maybe it's our business credit line. When this all first started back in March, the first thing I heard was, don't fight the Fed. Don't fight the Fed. The Fed can overrun this market. The Fed can prop this market up and they'll do it. But now the Fed is asking for fiscal stimulus. 
come on what else do you want me to do i am buying all the bonds out there i'm buying etfs the next step is stocks as i'm saying this and filming this i'm starting to get sick to my stomach i mean markets were meant to be fairly priced based on what the market thought the price should be consider the bond market pre-covid versus post-covid the federal reserve has been jumping into this market since what september of last year even earlier than that to prop it up to keep rates low when you suppress the bond yields bond values are much much higher well unfortunately this is really bad for those retiring and running a 60 percent bonds 40 percent equity portfolio what's that saying buy low sell high you're actually doing the opposite if you're buying into the bond market today you're buying high and you may be pushed to sell low if you're holding individual bonds you maybe can hold them to maturity but chances are you're buying them higher than par value you just retired you're a conservative investor you got to make that money last the rest of your life so you take a heavy fixed income position unfortunately that heavy fixed income position is yielding you nothing well not nothing but well close to nothing and for you to get good solid yield to keep up with your distributions you got to go out on the risk spectrum to really junk stuff stuff that's could become insolvent recently there was an article in the wall street journal that basically explained that pension funds who have a average distribution of seven percent a year are now being pushed out to buying equities and increasing their equity positions from 20 percent of their overall portfolio to upwards 50 percent why would a pension fund have to increase its equity exposure and in return they're increasing their risk exposure very simple there is no yield when the 10-year treasury is yielding you less than 0.7 of a percent there's nowhere to go and that's the safest fixed income asset you can buy if you're a pension fund manager you're at a crossroads and that crossroads is distributions of seven percent annually compared to yield what do you do you increase your risk exposure you start to go into equities and you increase your allocation from low percentages in equities to mid-range percentage in equities this well this could be actually be bullish for the equity markets pension funds represent an enormous amount of money trillions of dollars and they are the lifeblood of a lot of retirees especially baby boomers so if we see negative yields in say the two-year treasury because the fed is pushing yields down to keep bond markets values high you could see pension funds increase their equity exposure and go into more large cap companies pension fund managers are smart and they have an enormous amount of knowledge and data they can sift through to determine if right now is the best time to jump into equities to jump into certain sectors and most likely they're they're cautious so i know what you're saying right now okay trent i get it things aren't as good as it's, they say on the me, in the media i got a presidential election in front of me and where the economy will be taken by whoever becomes president i understand the federal reserve is suppressing bond yields and they're potentially jumping into well the equity markets i see that congress is going back and forth about another stimulus plan but i'm losing confidence what do i do here's what i'm doing I'm looking at credit card companies and I'm looking at the length of time that late payments are becoming. Are they going from 30, 60, 90 plus days? And I'm comparing that over the last 90 days. So I'm comparing the rate of change. Number two, I'm following the financial institutions that are lending money to companies, to individuals, and I'm looking at their behavior in the stock market. And third, I'm looking for default rates. I'm looking for insolvency. I'm looking for things that are showing cracks in the system, but I'm also looking for bullish opportunities. Where is the money going to rotate? Remember, fund managers, investment mega behemoths make money based on their returns. They all want to get paid. I mean, greed is driving a lot of these returns.
So you have to look at this and go, if a fund manager makes, say, two and 20, like a hedge fund or an institutional uh, money manager makes a base plus a percentage of profits versus a benchmark, you know they're gonna get aggressive when they can and they're gonna take advantage of opportunities when they can. So we're looking for those opportunities. That's what I'd go after. Risk management is key at this point. Look at your downside risk, measure out your relationship to your assigned benchmark, and ask the questions. Am I right? Am I wrong? And if I am right, why am I wrong? And if I'm wrong, where can I be right? Does that make sense?